Let's run some virtual machines on macOS. So over here I have uh, Manjaro running the XFCE desktop environment. Let me go ahead and open a terminal. See, that's pretty smooth. You can open file manager. Don't really have anything here. So I've heavily customized the i3 window manager what my D menu looks like. So I'll open Firefox that should open in workspace one. And if I open the terminal, it opens in workspace two. Okay, let me switch to here and fire NeoFetch. That's working pretty well and to prove to you that I am on macOS here you can see I can move to my macOS desktop and back into Linux. The demos that you just saw were all running QEMU, an open source machine emulator and virtualizer that boasts about being able to achieve near native performance using KVM which stands for kernel based virtual machines something that's built into the Linux kernel. Now recently they announced support for HVF which is Apple's hypervisor framework. This is going to enable us to run virtual machines on Intel based Macs at near native performance. So today let's have a look at how to go about doing that. QMU normally runs as a command and application and it has multiple configuration options and that can be a bit intimidating. So what I've done over here is broken it down into three easy steps and use the bare minimum configuration you require. And I'll go through them and show you the things that you would probably want to change. So the very first step is to create a disk image. Here you could change the name of the image and the size. I have given it as my disk and a size of 15 GB. So once we've done that, we're going to install the operating system onto this disk. So let's look at the second one. Now again over here, the M stands for the amount of uh, memory. So I have a system with uh, 16 GB RAM and 12 CPU cores. So I've given this as 8 GB RAM and SMP of 6. Uh, and the next thing is I give it a path. The CD-ROM option uh, specifies the path to the ISO image. I have it right here on my external drive. And then again, drive is the same disk name we created earlier. So if you change your disk name earlier, then you need to go and change this. The rest of the options you can leave as is. The important thing over here is on line 13, ACCL HVF, which tells QMU to use Apple's HVF based acceleration. And let's look at the last command. So very similar to the one we saw earlier. The only difference is we do not need the CD-ROM option anymore. So if you've installed virtual machines before using VirtualBox, you know that you kind of mount the CD-ROM, you start like a live CD, install the OS, and then you don't need that uh, CD anymore. So it's the same concept here. So that's why the first command used it and then the second command does not need it. As usual, I'll go ahead and add a link in the description to the commands I just showed you. Now, if using the command line is just not an option for you, there is something easier and that's UTM. So UTM is basically a GUI built around QEMU and it is free to use. It's built specifically for the Mac. If you want to support the developers, you could all always buy this from the Mac store. But if you go to their website, you can download it for free. And if you see over here, it is it'll give us all the QEMU option that it uses and it's way more than the options that we configured on the command line. Now I tried installing Manjaro via the command line and it just wouldn't work out. I installed Fedora via the command line and that worked. So that got me to UTM for Manjaro and it worked out uh, pretty well. So have a look at it. So that's uh, two ways. Either you go the command line route and keep it minimal or you can install the UT UTM application and try it out this way. So that's all for this video. Like, share and subscribe. I hope it's useful. I hope you use QEMU and never go back to VirtualBox.